All right. Well, welcome and thanks for joining us. The purpose of this training today is to really just provide an, a bit of an overview to everybody in Pennsylvania that's going to be uh, involved in the Toward Gigabit Libraries project uh, grant in some way, shape, or form. We, uh, my name is James Worley. I'm from Internet2, and I'm one of the uh, the PIs on this grant. And I'll just let, let Carson also introduce himself. And I'm Carson Block. I'm a library technology consultant, um, a one of the PIs on this grant. I've never I've never used that word PI before, so I'm not sure. I'm sure it's project uh, instigator, uh, principal yeah. investigator. Yes, <laughs> instigator. Thank you. We we have a very um, uh, we're working on something very formal and very important, but our working relationship is uh, fluid. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> principal troublemaker. PC. Yeah, there, there we okay. Go. <laughs> All right. So uh, we why don't we start by just I'm going to throw up a couple slides and just by way of introduction, just a few words uh, of introduction around the purpose of the grant, and then. We'll just jump right into the toolkit and kind of go through, spend the bulk of our time today, just going through what that, what the actual toolkit document looks like, how it's structured, um, and all of that. So just quickly, we'll do a. Uh, let me share my screen. I throw up a couple slides, and uh, let's see. All right. Voila. We'll put them in a, in a happier view. All right. Actually there. Okay, so we, um, we, were, we were given a grant in um, about two years ago. It's about a uh, $275,000, uh, sorry, two, $250,000 grant from the Institute for Museum and Library Services to just kind of address a really simple problem uh, that I think we all are pretty pretty well accustomed and aware of. Um, you know, these these slides I don't think are terribly necessary. They're they're really brief, so I'm just going to put them down. Okay. And stop sharing. Yeah, you know, they're just not all that helpful. I don't think. Um, no right, death by PowerPoint today. That's no, it. I don't think we need. You know, I started looking at. I was like, you know what? I don't think that's really necessary. So, so in spring of 2016, we we were awarded a 24 month grant, um, and it, the purpose was really to run a pilot project, really to develop a, a what we're calling a broadband assessment toolkit and training program, really for rural and tribal libraries. So, like, what was the specific problem we're trying to address? Um, this is, I think we all can recognize, you know, as Carson hit on earlier, that libraries, big or small and rural and urban areas alike, you know, they're struggling to provide really robust, scalable, open, uh, and free broadband service that to our, to, that our communities have, you know, rightly come to expect that libraries will provide as a, as a core service, do all of that, um, with limited budget. And in many cases, especially in rural areas, limited opportunities to even you know, limited uh, connectivity options. So that's a tall order for all libraries. Now, if we scale it down, you know, if we keep in mind of the 9,000 or so public libraries in the U.S., about 80% are, you know, quote unquote, standalone libraries, meaning they're not part of a larger library system that provides centralized IT support to all its libraries. So essentially, 80% of all the public libraries are largely on totally on their own to support their own technology, um, including broadband. Uh, now, about half of those uh, standalone libraries are in geographically very rural and remote, rural distant, or rural fringe. Those are the IMLS geograph ge geographic classification kind of locale codes uh, that they use. So, therefore, they have very typically have very limited staffing, let alone uh, you know, structure uh, or the nest, their staff doesn't necessarily have the technical skills or experience to manage what in some cases can be, you know, for a beginner, a really complex networking infrastructure. So that's, that was the specific problem we we're trying to, to address. So the, how are we actually attacking that problem? The, the, grant, the grant was 
was that we were awarded is a is a Laura Bush 21st century uh, librarian program grant. So the approach has to be about education and training for library staff. So we developed this this toolkit, which we'll get to just momentarily, um, that was written for librarians <coughs> with with really limited or no understanding about broadband or or just IT infrastructure in general. So it serves as both kind of an educational tool for librarians and also something we didn't necessarily realize the importance of at the outset, but also as an inventory tool um, where librarians can kind of document the current state of their library's broadband connection in there and just the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure they have in general. Um, so, as, and then secondly, as librarians are kind of working through this toolkit, uh, ideas emerge, uh, you know, on specific actionable things that they're realizing they can do either in the short term or long term to improve their, their broadband connectivity uh, in the library. So we created a second a kind of accompanying document called, we're calling the Broadband Improvement Plan document. And that's simply just a place where you can go in and as you're working through the toolkit and you can record your, record, make some notes on a, uh, some action steps that you want to take to improve your, your library's connectivity. So staff turnover also in rural libraries and, and tribal libraries is, is really high. Um, I'm sure you guys see that in Pennsylvania. We've seen it all over the country. Um, even mid-project people that you worked with a couple months ago, they're gone. So it's, uh, it's really, this, this broadband toolkit has served, is also serving as a really critical um, tool that helps preserve, I guess, the institutional knowledge and the, the, about the type, of inf the type of information at the library's you know, technical infrastructure is thoroughly documented and, and kind of ordered. And so it's really preserving for future staff uh, just the lay of the land in the library. So when that new person comes in, they can get up to speed real quickly. So the toolkit's kind of attacking that problem as well. Um, lastly, I guess about, you know, the, how we're attacking this problem, um, we've been trying to think about since day one, trying to think about, you know, once this $275,000 is burned, and it's gone. How are we going to uh, continue to sustain this 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 toolkit and also scale its use? So we we tried to we tried to do a lot at the outset, kind of at the at the very beginning, front front loading this pro project, knowing that it needed to be a kind of a standalone tool, standalone resource that any librarian or library staff member could could just pick up and use totally on their own, um, without somebody in the library um, to, to help them through it. Even though that's the approach we're doing during the pilot, we were trying to think about how this thing ultimately, when it's out in the wild, how is it gonna be used? And we need to create something that uh, meets that, those needs. Uh, so, so we've tried to do that. You'll see that as it's kind of thing baked into the, into the document. You'll see more of that in just a second. So a little bit about uh, what we've done to date, um, and that, I may actually put up a slide just because it shows the places we've been. Uh, but so the, uh, uh, yeah, I'll do that real quick. But it's so a little bit of background on the grant. Um, that's a little bit of background on the grant. So basically, that's kind of where we're at, what what the purpose is. Uh, so any, any questions on that at this point, just kind of the purpose of the grant or the background stuff before we move on? Okay, all right, so a little bit on how we've been piloting this thing. So the reason it's important, I think, is we're doing things a little differently in Pennsylvania. Uh, but once we got started, we got the money, we got started, we started thinking about, to kick things off, we, we, what we did is we identified, you know, a list of the states where there was a really high percentage of libraries that were located in really rural and remote areas with, with limited staff. Now, that, that was kind of, de we deemed that the, the greatest need where the greatest need was centered that we could address. Um, so next we kind of, we just, in each of those states, we selected based on need, we just trying to partner in each of those states with, with the state and regional research and education network, like in Pennsylvania, perfect partnership with Kimber, and then the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Commonwealth Library, Office of the Commonwealth Library. So we have two great partners in the state. We've tried to do that throughout in other states we've been in as well. Uh, so the purpose there is to definitely help us to identify and engage the right libraries and also get out there and help conduct site visits where 
it, with, with the libraries, to actually travel to them, sit down with the librarians in person and, and you know, spend two to four hours piloting the toolkit. So, okay, so far we've, we've visited uh, 44 different libraries. I can't believe that, Carson, that seems crazy. I know, that blows me away too. <laughs> <We've> been, <laughs> No, that was not just Carson and I, we did have Susanna Spellman yeah. before, which she she did, she she lifted some water as well um, and, and visited. So kudos to Susanna as well. So 44 libraries, nine states, um, Alaska, Washington, Idaho, let me see, uh, Arizona, Nevada, where else? Kansas, Texas. Oklahoma, Texas, yeah. uh, and Connecticut. And we are scheduled to do a bunch more site visits in South Dakota, New Mexico, and of course, Pennsylvania. Right. right, so let me just show you the map, just so you can kind of see a geographic spread. Yeah. I, I mean, like, just I like seeing that too, case. it's nice. <laughs> the map, it just, it's satisfying. Just you think, gosh, we did this, we, we went all yeah. this place. Okay, so there it is. There, that's, I hope you can see that. Um, yeah. The ones in blue are the ones that we're, we're calling scheduled, even though in Pennsylvania, we don't have dates on the calendar, but we know kind of where we're going. All right, so there's the map. Now, um, let me go back here. So let's turn our attention here to piloting what we're doing in Pennsylvania. So this is, you know, due to a number of kind of unique scheduling and staffing constraints, Jennifer and I just put our heads together and we thought, you know, Let's totally try a different approach in Pennsylvania. So that, I mean, that's the beauty of the pilot project, right? It's baked in, it's flexible and, 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 and encourages experimentation by its very nature. So that's, that's fun. Uh, so we decided to do what we're doing now, an online training uh, to prepare everybody here on the call who will eventually be going out and using this toolkit. Just do this online as opposed to the traditional like train the trainer approach, which we ended up we typically do in other states where we'll all meet up at a couple libraries uh, over a course of a couple of days, someone from the regional network, someone from the uh, state library will show up, we'll do, we'll do the site visit and it'll be kind of a train the trainer sort of experience. Then that person, those people are ready to go, they can just kind of go out in the state and go on work on their own. But we're, we just didn't make sense in Pennsylvania. So this is the approach, you're kind of doing it right now. We're just gonna go through the toolkit live uh, we'll see how this goes, but we're just going to throw up the toolkit. And our purpose isn't to you know, talk necessarily about the content. You guys could teach us, right. both Carson and I, much more about the content. Uh, you guys are much more networking engineers, obviously experts in, in, your, in your field. So we won't, we won't go through the actual content necessarily. We, we just want to go through kind of how it's structured, how the document's structured, um, what's in the document. Uh, and then just give a few tips and tricks so that we've learned on how to present it to the librarians. <clears throat> Again, you guys all have had a lot of experience working with libraries. Many of you have been out in doing this sort of thing, just not with this toolkit. So you can anticipate a lot of the, the situations you're going to run into. We'll just share just a few of the things we've seen specifically to this toolkit. So if that sounds good, if there are there any questions before we jump into the toolkit? All right, so Carson, what do you want me, I'm gonna turn over to you just to kind of walk through it. Does that sound yeah. okay? Yeah, that sounds okay. good. So I should just uh, share okay. my screen, is that correct? Either that or I could I could share my screen and then you just have to, you could just talk. However um, you want to do, do whatever me, you want to do. Let me share mine. It might be easier to go through and then that okay. way I won't give you whip, whiplash when I change directions. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, this is an overview of the toolkit, and, and this is actually a brand new um, layout that we have uh, as well. What we had been doing to date, because we wanted the toolkit to be um, iterative, we wanted to, do, to be very agile and take uh, improvement suggestions that we had as we were piloting the toolkit and make those changes as quickly as possible. Uh, we had been, like uh, as of two weeks ago, using a Google Doc. Um, uh, to do this, but we're now at the point in the, the grant where we want to start thinking about our destination format for the, the toolkit. And so um, uh, James uh, and I too uh, has been working really, really hard on, um, on this uh, 
toolkit format. I got to be from the peanut gallery and just, you know, give suggestions. Um, but uh, 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 James um, uh, and his partner have been doing all the heavy lifting on this. Um, the, uh, the toolkit uh, is, again, uh, designed to be um, uh, really usable for a layperson uh, to use. So our, our hope and our intent is that it's self-explanatory when you pick it up as far as um, uh, what you're supposed to do. So it starts out with a little introduction, of course, and a, a table of, of contents. Uh, to help orient folks, uh, as well as an executive summary that that describes the purpose of the toolkit and what we're hoping to accomplish. Um, we also have um, a, a process, and this process overview is really important for you as well. Uh, there's a couple of steps here um, that are, are key to the process. One is uh, selecting uh, pilot sites. The other is having an intake survey uh, that we send out. The intake survey is really, really important because you do not want to show up on site without some sense of where the library's uh, at in terms of the basics. And so these uh, these questions are, are have also been refined, so they're not, they're not too hard for the library to answer. But the library's answers to these questions are very revealing as to where their expertise is and, and actually where some of the problems might be. Um, uh, from there, we, we actually perform the site visit where a couple of things happen. One is working through the toolkit itself, uh, and the other is creating, uh, again, what we call the BIP or the broad band improvement plan. Uh, and uh, when, I, when I've been out in the field, what I've described to folks is that that's probably um, uh, one of the most valuable uh, things that they get back from the time investment that they've spent as a participant uh, and, and willingness to, uh, to see us. Because, you know, frankly, on a tech thing, sometimes people, they're not sure they want to see you. You know, but you know, especially when you ask them to fill out a survey and then say you're going to spend a couple of hours. So uh, having this tangible takeaway, something that they can um, produce results with, is really really powerful. The other experience is that when you when you've got somebody uh, with technology knowledge in your library who really cares about your problem you sometimes have a hard time letting them go. Uh, so be prepared, be prepared for that because uh, uh, one thing can lead to another in terms of um, um, the discovery process. But those are the two things that are really, really important. So the value of the, 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 the toolkit, the pilot toolkit is uh, to give the librarian or the library worker the experience of working through and thinking about these problems and in the process learning an awful lot. And then the thing that they really get that's really awesome is that, that takeaway of, of, of tasks um, or, or improvements that could be done. Um, and then, of course, after that, we have a post-pilot uh, survey. We want to see how it went for, uh, for them as well as for you in helping to share this out. And so with our new format for the toolkit, we have uh, three steps. This is taking kind of a linear format. Our old format was side by side. This one's kind of linear, so you can, you can just read down. Uh, you read a question in a gray box, and then the, um, uh, there's also a place in there to enter data into this, uh, pr this version of the toolkit if people wish to do that. And then below each question is a resource to help uh, someone answer the question. And again, the reason we have that format is our, our hope is that this can be a standalone, that uh, a layperson can pick this up and, and do their best to work through the, um, uh, the questions. We know that will be an impossible um, uh, aspiration for, for everyone in the world. However, it's been our guiding principle and it's been our reality check as we've gone through. We wanted to make this as helpful as it can be to someone without technical knowledge. And that's a, um, that's a tall order because we're talking about highly technical things. So that's the, that's the basic um, um, uh, a format for the question. So we have a question, and then we have a resource immediately following that question to answer it. Uh, so at this point, I'll pause to see if, there's any, if anyone has any questions, and I'll move my, my little box so I can see if anything comes up in the chat. But is there any questions so far on format? Seeing none. <laughs> I always hate doing this online because I can't see everybody. Uh, but seeing none, uh, and also I should say, please feel free to interrupt at any moment uh, if something's not clear um, or uh, if you have a question or you have a comment that you would like to add, it's, it's most welcome. Um, I will give you a tip on going through. And again, as James said, um, we're not going to go through every question on the toolkit um, uh, because that's something that, that we know that you have uh, expertise in and you have an understanding of. So you can... Uh, 
um, uh, I would love to hear any questions that you have about the specifics that you see. But I think the main thing uh, in the visits that I've done, um, I, I do have, a, you know, again, I've been working with, with data networks uh, in libraries for, for more than 20 years. And um, as a consultant, I, I have a um, kind of a deliberate approach. Um, I want to hone in on what the actual problems are that the library is facing instead of doing a, um, a kind of a scattergun approach. The scattergun approach is great for, I think, for folks that have less knowledge. In my case, I really want to spend the most time on the things that are giving them the most fits. And so what I've discovered is that um, uh, instead of going through the toolkit in a linear fashion, um, um, you know, starting with the first question and working through to the last one, I instead uh, start with a conversation uh, with the library staff uh, member based on that intake survey uh, to kind of confirm suspicions that I have of, of hot spots. Um, and uh, from there, we actually start doing a lot of walking around. So instead of using a digital form, and, and there's different ways that you can use this. If you're more comfortable or you're more portable with the digital form, that's really great. I've actually had more luck uh, with a paper form uh, for myself and also bringing paper forms for uh, the library uh, person to, to have and to take notes on and to work with. Because uh, a lot of times on the questions, for instance, um, uh, there's been a lot of fascination, for instance, in trying to understand what's in the data closet, for instance, or, um, and I said the data closet charitably, we all know that the data closet is sometimes um, network equipment hanging by wires, hanging by its own wires on a shelf, maybe there's a shelf, um, things like that. Uh, and so it's been, um, that sort of thing really lends itself to um, uh, bringing a paper form, having a, something to write down with, and then answering the questions for uh, the library staff member. The other thing that I've discovered is that, uh, you know, we've had to create a, a document that's as clean as possible. A lot of our, our network installations are anything but clean. So sometimes we've got interconnected uh, switches. Hopefully they're switches and not hubs, for instance. Uh, so we've got several different locations for, um, uh, for network equipment. Um, some of it's standard, some of it isn't. Uh, even sometimes trying to discover the type of connectivity a library has uh, can be a challenge. And so you've got to use your own uh, signs of discernment, um, you know, lacking a proper IT room and, and, and equipment that you can actually access. And that would be like in the case of uh, some of the microwave um, systems, sometimes the, uh, uh, the, the equipment's kind of hidden um, within the roof or somewhere between uh, the floor of the library's on and the, wherever they've placed the antenna. Uh, so it takes a little bit of discernment there. So uh, for, for folks that have um, uh, high skills in, in terms of troubleshooting, I think that that, um, uh, that approach is really, really good to make sure that the, the most important aspects of the, the, um, the visit are, are, are addressed. That doesn't mean you don't want to cover some of the other ones, and, and you definitely don't want to assume that you know everything that's going on. So the, the, it, it, I still go through the entire kit just to make sure we've, we've covered things, but I do like to, to hit um, what I think might be the most important things first, uh, because those then, of course, flow into the broadband improvement plan that, that as the practitioner, will be filling that out after the, after the fact. And it's just, it's just a very simple um, um, uh, document that helps us uh, state uh, any issues that we see and then make a suggestion for the, the library to make an improvement. Um, I don't have that up. Actually, before I go on to the broadband improvement plan, um, does anyone have any uh, questions or comments about the toolkit or the toolkit process during the visit? Carson, it, it might be worth just spending a couple minutes at the high level showing the table of contents yes. just to see a, a, a you know, big view of what's in there. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Uh, let me find it. Um, so um, the first thing uh, the first way this starts is the way any good tech assessment should go, and that's with an inventory of what the library has. So we're looking at um, the, the, we're trying to determine the type of broadband connection uh, each library has and how it's performing in terms of actual bandwidth. So um, we have uh, 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 tests that we're asking uh, the library to perform or, or, or us to perform while we're there. Um, uh, we want to look at the different devices that are in the chain and how they're connected. And so we've got network devices 
um, listed. We also have a, a resource to show uh, the library staff member how to create their own simple network map. And, and often we've worked on that together um, uh, on the visits that I've done. Uh, we also want to take a look at the condition of the wired network and the, and the power access. As we know, that's really, really challenged in some places. Um, you know, in worst cases, uh, and we also want the, uh, uh, we want to show how to identify um, uh, uh, wiring, like just even the revelation that wiring has the category printed on it. And, you know, cat, and there's differences between Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, and 6a. Um, those things have been uh, revelations to uh, the folks that we've worked with, and they've actually really enjoyed looking at those little, you know, dot matrix printouts on the side of the cables uh, because they feel, you know, that was a mystery before, and now they feel some uh, mastery of that. Uh, the other thing, of course, that's important is looking at the, the, um, the, the Wi-Fi network and the, the way that they're administering Administering it, the coverage of that Wi-Fi network, you know, whether it's adequate or, or not. Often it's, uh, you know, a single AP uh, access point or um, a, a single point, and it may not be placed optimally, 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 optimally. Um, uh, as <laughs> thank you, <laughs> as well as the the, um, the the devices that the library is serving with its um, uh, connection. Um, from there, um, our next is looking at broadband services and activities, broadband technology and operations, and funding. And I'm actually just going to go ahead, and I think it'd be better if I just illustrated a couple of things here um, uh, as we as we go. Uh, for instance, in looking at the the question of um, the network speed that we're asking people to to measure. Um, we give information as to uh, how to evaluate the quality of that connection, including what is it, what does jitter mean, what does packet loss uh, mean. The next question is, how much bandwidth might I need if I want to do things, uh, do certain things? Uh, we all know that the, uh, I, I apologize, uh, I'm in downtown Fort Collins, also known as Hooterville. Um, and the Hooterville trolley is coming by. We have a, a train that comes, still comes down through the middle of downtown. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the uh, sound of the train. Uh, the, uh, uh, but this, this is a, we, we all know that the, the, the capacity of a, of a network can be filled up with simple things. You know, there's a multiplier factor, but we, it's also helpful to show um, the types of um, um, bandwidth uh, and the quality of that bandwidth that's required. Uh, so this is an example. This chart here is an example of um, a, you know showing the difference. Uh, different services, what their speed requirements might be from basic to high speed, as well as the quality of that connection. Um, uh, and this is that first section that I was uh, uh, describing before. Uh, under the network devices, we have uh, what is a, um, a very basic network diagram, but I think as you look at it, uh, you'll see that it covers, you know, most of uh, even a complex network could, could fit under this paradigm uh, where we basically have, you know, the internet on one side and then we have the uh, endpoints inside the library. Uh, on the other, and then the devices that are typically uh, used in between uh, to convey uh, our connectivity uh, uh, to the rest of the world. And again, this is uh, this has been a very good learning experience for most of the folks that we visited because they haven't thought of it in terms of this. They typically think of it as terms of we have a bunch of boxes with blinking lights, and <laughs> they I'm not sure what they mean. Uh, in this case, um, this gives some uh, dimension to that and some understanding. And you know. You know, to a to a one um, on the visits, we've seen that uh, uh, create a better understanding and uh, steps to uh, steps to action. Uh, throughout here, uh, again, when we're asking a question, we want to make sure that people understand what we're what we're talking about. So, as uh, as space permits, we've tried to put in illustrations um, that. Uh, that makes sense or that would be typical. Uh, these days, with uh, so many different flavors of equipment, sometimes it's a challenge to find the right image, but we've done our best, and actually these images have gone through um, uh, evolution as we've uh, created uh, the toolkit. And so I'm just trying to go to the next um, the next section here. There's, there's an example, of course, that was actually from my office. I just grabbed some wire I had, and uh, my assistant, Bonnie, took a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so that was teamwork on that on that photo. Um, also, um, talking about the differences, this is an example of the chart showing the difference of the capacity and performance of different category of cable. Um, 
I'm going to go through here to the next section. We know the document's long, and so I will say that that can be an intimidation factor before we visit uh, for the for the library staff member. However, once we're there and they see that the questions are fairly simple and that the resources are are uh, fairly strong, um, uh, folks feel differently about the, the document. It turns into more of a reference then instead of a big scary thing that they have to um, fill out. So our next, um, our, our next area is broadband services and activities. And um, here we have a couple of, of tools that, that exist. Um, to kind of you know figure out sizing up the uh, the uh, the connection, um, the Edge uh, Initiative Bandwidth Calculator is a good resource um, that we ask people to use if they wish um, uh, to look at what they what their their target capacity uh, should be for the number of devices that they have, for instance, that they're serving. Um, we all know that can be um, a difficult conversation because sometimes the library there's there's no um, faster access for the library in the community or they have budget issues where they're not able to afford faster access even if it's available. Um, however, it's good to know what you actually need and to have aspirational goals. So some of the, the uh, items in this part of the toolkit uh, help um, um, uh, with that. Um, some of these things too, as James was talking about, these, these are kind of like a self-inventory. We're not collecting data on this. Our, the purpose of our grant is not to collect data, so we haven't been um, uh, using this to collect uh, data at all, uh, but it's helpful for the library to have its own inventory and knowledge of the um, uh, of what they have. Like, for instance, looking at their filtering, talking about the uh, implications to E-rate, um, thinking about aspirations that they might have uh, uh, with their uh, connection. Um, we also have, and I'll mention this too, because this is one of uh, James's awesome projects. Um, when we're talking about aspirational, uh, one of the items that's in the toolkit that I think has captured a lot of imaginations is Lola, which is the low latency uh, connection for uh, artists, musicians, and others to have a real-time connection with each other. A lot of bandwidth, of course, is needed for that and high quality of bandwidth. Um, but this is a good way to introduce uh, possible services that, that maybe the library has not uh, heard about. Um, very important to the project is not just identifying what might be wrong, but how are you taking care of what you have? Uh, and is there a way that we can um, uh, determine um, a need there? And of course, we all know that that's a, a, a common need, good quality um, help. And so this section of the document we go through um, uh, the sorts of, of help that's available, so not just not just who, but um, the quality of that help, um, and, and do it in a way that's not um, threatening to anyone in the chain, because we know that, especially in a rural area, um, we have uh, some absolute rock stars in terms of uh, people who are committed, uh, who, are, who are knowledgeable about technology, they're committed to the public service mission of the library, they like the library, they like the, the librarians, and they do a wonderful job. Uh, we have some others that don't have the same sort of understanding or, or place the same sort of um, importance on that. So part of the purpose of this question is to, to kind of suss, are these, these groups of questions, is to suss out the availability of technical support, whether it's internal to the library through staff, uh, or external, and uh, the quality of, of that sort of um, uh, support. And um, uh, that extends as well to the ISP and things like that. Um, uh, we also have, uh, see, I guess we don't have all of the, this might be because, I, yeah, I have an early copy here. Um, but we have sections, of course, on um, uh, broadband, broadband funding. Um, and different options, of course, via E-rate. We know that that uh, the last couple of years, E-rate has created a lot of new opportunities um, uh, for our internal connection part of the, the equation. Uh, we also have a, a, a quite extensive um, collection of resources, clickable links um, in different areas, including um, uh, E-rate, uh, content filtering, which of course is important for those receiving E-rate, um, uh, different uh, training resources uh, that we have. One of them I uh, participated in uh, working for the state of Texas. Uh, we have some videos that they've created that they're they're just you know public access videos that that address a lot of these topics, um, uh, as well as a uh, you know best practices, backups, things that that did not come up in the toolkit itself, but things we would like the library to know about internet use policies, and then finally, a glossary. 
<laughs> which is the key to all the the geek speak and and the the uh the glossary has gone over really really well i've seen uh library staff members actually looking things up uh, as we've been talking and so they appreciate having um just a plain uh explanation of some of the terms that we use that was that might have been longer james than than uh, you were envisioning but that's kind of our walkabout through the through the toolkit itself yeah thanks Carson. that's great um questions any anything um uh, related to the toolkit are you guys feeling ready to uh grab the latest document and sort of hit the road and present it to the libraries or what what are we what have we missed so far um so what's the um uh, after we're done, are we turning these in to your team and providing the library with a copy? Um, I, I, from what I've seen from the ones we've done with our own, a lot of uh, what comes out of these is also a service proposal from our side. So right. a lot of times I think we see it as an opportunity to maybe put a managed router switch, firewall, UPS on site and help them out. Are, are we okay to do that? Um, in these scenarios as well, or would you rather it not be, um, would you rather Something. us separate it from the, the project? Right, well, I think if, if there was a sort of a, if, the, if it was segmented into two parts of the visit, one part was just simply uh, going through the, the project and uh, going through the toolkit, and then if uh, then that's concluded, and you could change conversation to, uh, you know, as you described. So if there's, you know, like a hard stop between those two topics, so they weren't commingled, I think that would be fine. Okay. Uh, and in terms of getting the uh, the document, a version of the document back, it does present, now that we've moved away from Google Docs, uh, where everyone is kind of filling it out online or printing and, you know, going back and back filling it online where there was a common version there we will have to i guess you'll just have to email it to us or upload it to we could create a box folder or some kind of central repository where you could you could uh put the the the, the completed toolkit okay yeah. and we should we should clarify too the um we haven't been filing the toolkits themselves the it's the broadband improvement plan that we've been um that, that we've been collecting uh, and, right. and and that's what we actually want for the for the data because that's where we take you know a a, um, a world of possibilities and hone them down to the things that really we think were the most effective for the library and and James I think you you stated that really well because of the uh, Kinver's uh, um, uh, relationship with with clients you definitely have an opportunity to to mm -hmm. help them directly um, for the purposes of the toolkit though that we, we having that hard stop or hard separation between the toolkit process and then the services that you could provide that I agree that's the most appropriate yeah and I'll just, this is Jennifer I'll just jump in and add um, you know thinking through this I think something that's going to be really important for us Mike is sort of you know, when we're doing these visits, especially like to these first six libraries that have already been selected, it's going to be important for us since we're doing the visits without the US UCAN IMLS team or, or, you know, IMLS project team that we are sort of clear with the library, you know, that we are, you know, that we're doing the toolkit. Um, we're coming up with the broadband improvement plan as part of the IMLS grant and really, as Jane said, keep that separate. I don't want there to be like a lot of uncertainty about which part was the sort of IMLS project part and which part is like Kimber part, right? So I think we do need to like, you know, just have some some clarity around that with these folks. So they're, you know, like I don't want it being like reported back that, you know, oh, you know, we were provided with this, you know, quote as part of this IMLS project. No, 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 that's not, that's, that's not gonna be okay. I think we just have to be real clear about it. Okay. One, one suggestion I can give, I don't want to belabor it, but I, I think this is a great topic because we, um, in Texas, um, there was an opera, there was two things going on there that were really, really important. One was the timing, uh, doing this in December. The second is that Texas had just hired a, an E-rate consultant for the state, and I knew that they were having trouble uh, connecting libraries to the E-rate because of, the, you know, E-rate's past reputation. 
And so as I was uh, discussing things with the library, I, I didn't say they needed to file for E-rate. I said, I would, I would simply say as an option, um, uh, the, the Texas State Library is, has, um, has an E-rate consultant. As I'm writing up the recommendations, would you like me to write them so that you can take this to the E-rate consultant at the Texas State Library to pursue funding for things that we've determined that you actually need right now? Uh, 201, they all said, yes, please, uh, <laughs> in that case. But there was no, um, there wasn't a direct connection um, between, uh, you know, other, th other than saying that this resource is available to you if you wish to follow. Um, and so that was, that was a good separation um, uh, there, I think. And that was, a, if, if you needed to see the way those Texas things were written up, I'd be glad to send those out as well. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Let me find my pen and I'll make a note. All right, and while Carson's doing that, there's a question in the chat from uh, Diana. So for services that may be offered, there will be a disclaimer that not part of IMLS project. Is there a time period between? Yeah, that's the tricky part, right? So leveraging the fact that a, a Kimber engineer may be on site there, you know, and not having to do a, a, like a redundant visit if information is gleaned during that visit. Yeah, I think there has to be, I'll, I'll, I'll provide my answer and then everybody else chime in, but I think it'll be important to be, you know, clear that there's a disclaimer part that, you know, the, any sort of library network assessment is provided as part of, you know, is separate from um, uh, the project, the IMLS project. How many people are you going to send out per, per trip? Well, <laughs> I think... We haven't quite figured that out yet since okay. this has been a little bit of a moving target, trying to figure out whether we could bring you guys out on site oh, with sure. us. Yeah. Um, you know, having just determined that that's not going to be possible in the appropriate time frame for the grant purposes and for okay. Kimber, you know, yeah. I think, Mike, we need to sort of figure out what the appropriate sort of resources are from a Kimber perspective. Um, I kind of thought maybe we could like divide it up a little bit and have. I, Mike could just go do all of them, or he might assign it to folks, or I might tag along. I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Um, we may we may pick the first one and do it with more than one person, but then the ultimate goal would be, um, I think we have enough engineering technical resources that they could handle these on their own. Okay. Well, one, one way that you might handle it to help with the separation is when you're doing the site visits for the toolkit, go out and uh, just do the just do the toolkit, um, and um, but make an avenue for yourselves to to have a follow up visit with the with the library like afterwards. Uh, it doesn't have to be physical, right? You could do that uh, virtually. Um, uh, I, I was thinking if you were going to bring two people out, you could have one person do the toolkit and the other one could be the resource uh, for Kinber um, uh, on site. But if it's if it's just one person, I, I, I think that that could work and that actually might be very, very rich as well because then they can, um, they can have a little while to ponder the recommendations that are being made and uh, you can have a richer conversation later. Just a, just a suggestion. I know you know what you're doing. Yeah. And I Actually, one of the libraries on the site is probably not more than a 40 minute drive from where we're sitting right now. Okay. So that's probably the first one we'll target. Yeah, good, good idea. Where's the list? Oh, uh, I should. Yeah. Uh, all right, the, the only, I think the only other thing is uh, that I can think of at the moment is just making sure, so at the end of the, the site visit, what we like to typically get is a, your your feedback on how it went, what you learned, what you observed, uh, how the the tool, how effective was the toolkit? Did you identify any deficiencies in the toolkit that we'd like that that you you think we should consider remedying or uh, fixing, editing the toolkit to accommodate that sort of thing? And we do have a uh, online. We just have a, a Google Doc form that you can use to submit your feedback. We ha and so what we'll do, I'll send to Jennifer, maybe you could, Jennifer, you could disseminate to everybody who's gonna be doing site visits. We just kind of have a, we, your role is known as the technical advisor, the, the person going in and visiting the library, walking through. 
the the toolkit. So we have a what we call just a, like a technical advisor uh, guidebook that kind of walks you through the role and responsibilities of that that position, as well as how to get reimbursed uh, for your meals and your mileage and all that stuff. There's since it's a federal grant, there's some fairly uh, you know hefty rules and regulations. For example, you have to have a a, a printed copy of everything, even if it's just like a cup of coffee, it's like a buck or something like that. To get reimbursed, you have to have a itemized receipt. So that all of that kind of stuff is in the uh, the, uh, the 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 document I mentioned that you can kind of go through and, and get it, get sort of prepped for it. And then Je Jennifer will you'll I'll be sure to feed you the latest versions of the toolkit and the uh, broadband improvement plan since they are still in flux and moving. They're, they're working documents. So you can always know where to grab the, the authoritative document before you hit the road. So that's like a little bit of logistics stuff. Um, trying to think, I think we've covered most of the bases. If you guys have any other questions in terms of uh, the other toolkit, we didn't show you the broadband improvement plan, but you, you have a link to it. You can take a look at it. It's a pretty self-explanatory document. Um, if there are if there are things that kind of crop up between now and the time you you hit the road, we could do another uh, video or phone call to coordinate or uh, you know respond to those questions over email. Just want to make sure you guys feel well taken care of and and uh, just uh, again say thank you to everybody and just express how grateful we are to Kinber and to uh, Commonwealth Library. Uh, Office of the Commonwealth Libraries to <clears throat> participate and par partner with us on this project. We greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Less James and Carson, for doing this today. Um, I, I, I want to just say for the folks who are on from the Office of Commonwealth Libraries that were uh, invited by Janelle, um, we will follow up directly with Janelle and sort of figure out a role or the role for OCL sort of involvement moving forward. I think it's great that so many of you were on this call here today and got the sort of overview of the, the project and the toolkit and got to sort of virtually meet, uh, you know, James and Carson and we can kind of connect those dots. Um, I, I don't know you know, quite 100% what um, what the plan is there and whether you all might be in a position to have resources to go, you know, on site yet. So we'll have to sort of think through that. Um, we would, of course, welcome anyone to join the site visits uh, that wanted to go with the Kimber team. So, but again, I'll coordinate that with Janelle. We'll make sure that those sort of loops are closed moving forward as to what the appropriate level of uh, involvement from OCL personnel is. And with that, I guess thanks, James and Carson, for joining us and presenting this and sharing the opportunity to be a part of your grant. It's exciting. Thanks again. Thank you.